Family Theater presents Deborah Paget and Walter Brennan. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Legend of High Chin Bob, starring Walter Brennan. And now, here is your hostess, Deborah Padgett. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Legend of High Chin Bob, starring Walter Brennan as Maverick. It's twilight of an autumn day on a small cow ranch in the lush country of north-central Arizona. Old Maverick, a rough and weathered relic of an earlier and wilder time, sits in the bunkhouse door, staring out at the sunset. He shades his eyes as a small boy comes shuffling down the path. Then he calls. Hi, Lonnie. How come you look so down? You just had supper, didn't you? Yep, I just had supper. Man's got no call to feel so hang dog after a good meal. Sit down. Thanks. Boy, I've seen some sad looking critters in my time. Humans and animals, but you should take the cake. My dad's upset with me, old Maverick. Real upset. Oh, well, now that is bad. What have you done to get your power riled? You been in some kind of mischief without letting me know about it? It's not a mischief he's riled about. He says I never stick to anything more than two days. Oh. Any security your pa is concerned with? Guess so. One day I'm saying I can't live unless he gives me a pony. Then if I get a pony, I don't ride it. I flitter on to something else. Mm-hmm. Well, that is a serious kind of weakness. You think your pa's got himself quite a good point there. You know a man needs to set his sights and just, well, hold them steady. Seems to me like everyone does like I do. Why, how's that? Well, take more. One day, she can't rest till she bought her pretty new dress. Next day, she just hangs it in the closet. Wouldn't be seen on the streets with it. Mm, well, women's likely to behave so. But not a real Western man. No, sir, not a rancher like your pa or, uh, uh, or me. That's what Dad says. <clears throat> no, sir. <laughs> Everyone looks up to a man who sticks with the thing. Right through to the bitter end, come what may. No one admires a fella that ties into one thing and then before the knot is set is turned off to something else. I want to do the right things. Yeah, the bravest man I ever knew was like that. Name of High Chin Bob. High Chin Bob? Who was he? Who was High Chin Bob? A young one that's, that's raised in Arizona and you ask me such a question? Lonnie, I'm plumb flabbergasted with you. Everyone's here to High Chin Bob. I ain't. Well, now he'd be a right good fella for you to just to pattern yourself after. Not that I advise you going quite as far as Bob did, because, uh, well, he was, uh, he was a mite on the extreme side. Do you know him? Do I know him? Well, I should hope to tell you I did. Me and Bob was bunkmates at the Lazy J. Uh, I was, uh, you might call his best friend until, until, well, uh, <laughs> right up to the time it happened. What happened? Oh, now, you don't want me to tell you a story. Sure I do. What happened to High Chin Bob? Well, uh, to understand what happened to Bob, you first got to know what kind of a cowpoke he was. How long ago did you know this high chin Bob? It's a good many years back, Lonnie. I was a young and a 30 or thereabouts. Bob was just my age. Now he wasn't a big man, uh, not in feet and inches, but I never knowed anybody to match him for courage before or since. Like I said, him and me was bunk buddies at the Lazy J. <laughs> Lazy J was a good outfit, too. Up in the Mokionis. Not a big spread, but we're a nice bunch of people to work for. You know the boss's niece, a young lady named Polly? 
Well, she was the nicest one of all. Or at least so thought High Chin Bob. Not that they was without their little disagreements, you understand. Why'd you ever say you was fond of me if you aimed to back out like this? I'm not backing out, and I'm still fond of you. I'm just telling you that I don't believe you'll ever save enough money for us to get married. Well, of course I will. But when? After we're old and gray? All my friends are married, Bob. I'm the last. Well, I hadn't known till this moment that you was in such an all-fired hurry. Hurry? Well, we've been going together for almost five years, and you still haven't saved enough money to buy a ring and a license and pay for the honeymoon. Well, there have been one or two emergencies come mm, up. There's uh, an emergency every time someone gets out a deck of cards. Now, Polly, man who works hard all day is entitled to a little relaxation. I have no objections to your relaxing. But I wish it didn't always cost us our getting married money. Look, look, I tell you what. I'll start saving next payday, and in no time at all, You I'll, said I'll, that four I'll, years ago. Oh. Uh, now, just a minute. If you aim to be unreasonable... Call it unreasonable if it suits you, Bob, but listen to what I'm telling you. I'm giving us 30 days. <laughs> you sound like a judge. Don't try to jolly me. I mean what I'm saying. If we can't afford to be married in the next 30 days, then... Well, then we just better forget it. No, you don't mean that. You're just a saying it to scare me. Try me. But, but 30 days? Where can I get that kind of money in 30 days? I've made up my mind. That's the way it's to be. Now, Polly, don't get that stubborn look. I'm supposed to be the stubborn one in this pair. I'm feeling tired, Bob. I think I'll go in. Hey, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Let's talk some more about this. There's nothing more to be said, Bob. Good night. Good night, Polly. No, oh, women, they don't get some fool notions. 30 days. I could never raise that much money in 30 days. Well, poor old Bob was real upset because he was right fond of Polly, though he, though he seemed a mite careless of her affections. He'd always figured they'd marry someday. Now she was pressuring him into action. Wasn't there any way he can raise the money? Now that's funny you should ask me that, Lonnie. Because when Bob came into the bunkhouse that evening, he, he put the very same question to me. Ain't there some way I can raise that money? Well, it should be if, if we set our minds to it. I'd like to think this is just a passing notion of Polly's with him. I know it ain't. She means it. Now or never. Uh, how much money should you have? Well, I figure I need $150, $200 to carry it off in style. Style? See, how stylish do you have to be? Well, I only figure to make this maneuver once, and I want it to be complete. Well, that kind of money appears to me a bank holdup uh, is your only out. You know, if I wasn't such an honest critter, I think it'd help you. No, be serious. Polly's got blood in her eyes. She's likely to marry that, that, that silly-looking Horace Amberley if I don't come through. Well, I've never had that much money in my hands all at once. I might stumble onto a gold mine while I was out riding herd or fixing a fence. Yeah. yeah, I've done a sight of stumbling myself, but it was never over a no gold mine. More likely to be cactus. Maybe I could catch me a desperado. You know, they pay big rewards for such. Well, no desperados in his right mind had ever come up this way. Maverick, I come to you for help, and all you've done so far is discouraged. Now, 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 wait a minute, Bob. I want to help you, but it ain't no good you counting on gold mines and reward money. <sighs> I've lost her. That's the story. It's the first time in my life I ever let anything I wanted get away from now, me. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not so quick. We ain't exhausted the possibilities yet. Why, there must be oh, a... Maverick! Uh, what's old Sandy got the wind up about? Quit that yelling. Me and Maverick's right in here. Uh, the boss wants us all up in the pasture to the other side of Ten Horn Draw Prado. At this hour of the night, what for? A uh, big mountain lion struck the herd, killed two, maybe three yearlings. Boss wants to track him down, so get your gear, boys, and let's hit the trail. Bet it's the same cat that hit before. And if it is, he's a giant. All right, you boys can go to bed. There's one ordinary critter that High Chin Bob aims to lasso himself. <laughs> You sure I ain't a worrying you, Lonnie. Golly, no. You all went after that big cat? That's right. We had considerable experience with that particular killer. This one his first visit, and those of us that had seen his tracks knew how big he was. Well, sir, we went racing down to the pasture and took off in all directions looking for that cat. Me and Hyde and Bob stayed pretty close together, and 
After three hours of riding, it was clear we wasn't going to meet up with that killer cat. Oh, he's got clean away from us, Maverick. We're wasting our time. He's sitting up on a ledge somewhere. He's laughing at us. Well, I ain't no laughing mood. Ho, ho, now. Oh, steady, steady, girl, steady. Not feeling saddle sore, are you? Sure. I'm just sore all over, inside and out. How do you get away from us so clean? Well, this ain't no ordinary mountain lion. This is the daddy of them all. Until we start treating him with the respect he deserves, we ain't gonna tie on to him. Mm, just how'd you go about it? Well, for one thing, I wouldn't turn every cowpoke and hound dog in the Mokionis loose on his trail. No, I'd set just one good man to rope him. <laughs> High chin Bob, for instance? <laughs> well, since you mention it, I can't think of no one better qualified. Well, uh, when we get back to the ranch, I suggest you just discuss this ID with the boss. I know he'll appreciate being told how mistook he's been. Now, I could take that line, Maverick. You know it. Yeah, like you said, he's tricky and he's big. I've never turned loose of nothing yet once I got a rope around him. Uh, I don't care who ropes that cat, I'm sleepy. You know, man who brings in this lion is going to make a name for himself. And I'd just as soon it'd be High Chin Bob. Yeah, just as soon. Come on! Come on! Well, for the next week, I heard only about two things from High Chin Bob. Raising the money to marry Polly and, and roping that killer cat. Did Bob tell his plan to the boss? Yeah, but the boss didn't pay much attention to Bob, you see. Bob, well, Bob was quite a talker. And you know when a fella talks too much, folks you get a tendency not to listen. I've noticed that myself. Anyways, the excitement about the cat sort of died down, and the boss began to get hopeful that he'd moved on. Bob talked less about how he was going to rope that lion and worried more about how he was going to make Polly give him more time. Another piece of cake, Bob? No, no, thank you, Polly. Four is my limit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Polly, hmm? about that 30-day limit you handed me? You just have 20 days left. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know you just said it to throw a scare into me because I couldn't possibly raise that much money in 30 days. I meant exactly what I said, Bob. 30 days. And you have 20 left. Well, give me three months, and three months with a little luck, I can save enough out of my pay. I wouldn't wait for luck if I was you, Bob. You counted on it before. That's why we've had to wait five years to be married. Polly, hmm? I love you. Doesn't that mean anything to you? It means a great deal, Bob. You know it does. But, well, I can't wait forever. I want a home. I want children. And... You have 20 days left. Oh, Polly. 20 days. Bob had given up hope, and I can tell you he was an uncomfortable sort to be around. Moping and sighing and looking plumb mortified. And try as I would, I'm blamed if I could think of one thing to say that'd cheer him up. What about the mountain lion? Oh, well, hey now, who's telling this story? I'm coming to that. Sandy and Bob and me was riding herd in the high pasture. It'd been a thunderstorm and we'd been trying to keep the cows from getting too excited. The storm was just about over and I was, well, I was sort of dozing on my horse when I come plumb awake in a hurry. Can you tell? Is he hurt bad? Oh, he's lying on the ground. Don't look so good. Can you tell, Bob? Uh, what hit him? There's not much doubt of that. It was that cat. Look at his shoulder. This is awful, Bob. Why, who'd have thought that cat would jump a man like we that? we got to stop that bleeding, Maverick. And you take Sandy back to the ranch and tell him what's happened. Whatever you say, Bob, but what are you aiming to do? I'm going after that killer cat. What happened then? Well, I took Sandy back to the ranch like Bob told me, and they sent for a doctor. He come quick and patched up the shoulder. 
Sandy was weak from losing so much blood, but he, he wasn't too bad hurt. And the sound of Bob and me riding to him had scared off that cat. But what about Bob? Well, he, he lost the trail of the cat and rode in toward morning. As soon as Sandy was strong enough to talk, we all crowded in to hear what he had to say, and you know it was hair-raising, believe me. Don't crowd, uh, don't crowd in so close on him, boys. Let him get his breath now. Go on, Sandy. Uh, I was setting my pony high in the herd. Maybe I was getting a mite sleepy. Storm was over, and I was tired. My pony drifted over into the shadow. And, and that's I, when he jumped you? It was like a house falling on me. I felt his claws go into my shoulder, and I fell off the horse. He's the biggest cat I ever seen. Bigger than you dream. And a man killer. Ain't often they'll jump a man, unless they're wounded. <laughs> You'd have finished me if you boys hadn't come up. Uh, I'll never forget it. So heavy, I couldn't move to fight him off. We gotta get that killer cat. He's gotta be stopped. The boys was all mighty excited and upset. The boss, he, well, he looked real serious, and he offered $100 cash to the cowpoke that brought that cat in, dead or alive. $100? Collies. I'll bet Bob was excited about that. Yes, sir, you know he was. He seen it as his biggest chance, and he was dead set to drop a rope around that lion. Then we got another piece of news that put him even more on edge. Hey, Maverick. Maverick, have you heard? He had what? There's a man in the house talking to the boss. And he's ready to pay another hundred dollars for that killer cat alive. He wants that lion it, alive? Is he, is he crazy? Like a fox, he's heard how big this cat is. He aims to put it in a show. A hundred dollars? Yep. Well, that means that cat's got two hundred dollars on his ornery head. <laughs> Just exactly the amount I'm needing to marry Polly. Well, after seeing the way this kitty cat clawed Sandy, I wouldn't be too anxious to take him alive. Well, once I get a rope around him, I wouldn't fear him none. I am to track him down tonight. You coming along? Uh, well, sure, if you want me. Now, you go with the understanding that the lion's mine to take. Listen, I ain't eager to take him off in your hands. I just go along for the ride. That killer's yawn. Well, Shalani, we saddled up. Me and Heitch and Bob, and neither of us said much. And I don't know what old Bob was thinking, but... Somehow I couldn't get my mind off and poor Sandy. And just as we was all set to ride off, we heard someone call and turned to see Polly running toward us. Bob! Bob! Huh? Bob! Uncle just told me. You mustn't do this. Do what? Maverick and me just taking a little ride. You're going after that cat. The one that mauled Sandy. Well, now, if we was to happen to run into him, I might just drop a rope over his ugly head. Oh, you're doing it for the money because of what I said. That cat's worth $200. That'd marry us proper, Polly. Oh, don't, Bob. Forget what I said. I'll wait. I'll wait as long as you like. Only please don't go after that cat. Please. Here, now, what kind of talk is that for my bride-to-be? You act like you got no confidence in high chin, Bob. You, you gonna try to take him alive? Well, he's worth twice as much alive. I... I can't stop you? I don't figure so. Now, I got my heart set on lassoing that critter and collecting the money and the glory. Well, then, will you be careful, Bob? Promise? <laughs> careful as a cat, Polly, or even carefuler. Come on, Maverick, let's ride. We mustn't keep our little pet waiting. Yeah, come on. Lonnie, I've ridden into some bad spots in my time, but none that gave me a worse fright than the night me and Hyde Chin Bob went after that killer lion. And Bob was set on catching him alive? Why, he had to be alive. Bob was counting on the extra hundred he, he, he'd draw if the critter was still a-kicking. Now me, I, well, I was mostly just interested in keeping myself alive. How far did you have to ride? Yeah, it was quite a distance from the ranch. In fact, I was beginning to think we wasn't going to meet up with that old cat, and I was sort of lazing along, sort of relaxed, and... 
That's the way Sandy was dozing when the cat jumped him. Hey, Maverick. Bob! Come on, come on. Bob, stop that, would you? Sorry to bust into your dreams, but I got me a notion from the way this horse of mine is a dancing that we may not be too far away from that killer cat. Yeah, mine seems a mite skittish, too. Maverick, why don't you ride a little ahead? Hmm? And if the cat starts to jump you, I'll have him. Now, hold on. I didn't come out here with you just to be used as bait. I won't let him touch you. My rope would be around his neck before you're in any danger. Oh, I know you're a fine roper, Bob, and, well, after all, it's my neck you're sticking out. Maverick, I don't have to tell you how important this is to me. I've got to get that cat and get him alive. Now, now, will you help me or won't you? Well, all right, but if you miss, I'm counting on a first-class funeral. <laughs> I'm not counting on any funerals. I got me in mind to go to a wedding. You know, this horse of mine sure acts funny. There's no mistake in that. I tell you, it's the cat. Right, now get moving, Maverick. Right Before he changes his mind, makes a run for it. All right. Well, here I go. Get your rope ready? My rope is ready, and I'm right behind you. Well, boy, I'll confess to you, I closed my eyes, chawed on my lip a bit, and nudged my horse forward. There was a clump of trees dead ahead. And it stood to reason if that big cat was anywhere near, he was likely stretched out on a limb in one of them trees. Closer and closer it come, all the time wondering just how good High Chin Bob was with that rope. And remember the, the things Sandy had said. We were moving under the trees. Nothing happened. It looked like Bob had been wrong. I half breathed and then a sigh of relief and then... if I told you how big that lion was. He went crashing and banging down the slope just as that rope wasn't even around his neck. And High Ching Bob went right after him? Yes, sir, right after him on his horse. I could hear him heading down the slope. The cat are screaming and Bob are yelling. I took after him, but the pace they were setting was too fast for me. So what did you do? Yeah, he stopped on the trail and I waited. And pretty soon, sure enough, I heard him coming. You mean Bob and the mountain lion were circling you? It's just what I mean. I raised my rifle. I aim to finish that cat once and for all. No, don't shoot him, Maverick. You're crazy. I gotta kill him. I'll keep this tally around the horn till judgment day. But I'll never turn loose of this cat. Five times I had Chin Bob and that lion raced past me, and five times I raised my rifle to drop that cat. But Bob wouldn't turn him loose. Well, what happened then? Well, Silani, I rode back to the Lazy J and I told him all there just what had happened. That High Chin Bob had roped the big cat and wouldn't turn him loose. Did they all go back with you? They did, including Polly. We couldn't find High Chin Bob that day, but after it got dark and the moon started coming up over the rim, just like it is now, Ronnie, we seen him. And High Chin Bob was still holding the cat? Yes, sir, he was. Just as he had been the night before. Looking a mite weak and wane now, but still glued to his horse. It was a ghostly sight, I tell you, and Miss Polly was so scared by it, she near fainted. But she did manage to call out as they thundered past. For days, we tried to get Bob to turn loose of that cat, but he never would. Like I said, Lonnie, he was a man who stayed with the thing once he started it. You mean he never stopped chasing that cat? He never did. Oh, Maverick, you said the story was true. And it is, boy. None truer. 
Why, lots of times at night in the Mokionis, you'll hear a ruckus among the stones that'll lift the hair right off in your head with fright. And you'll see a cow horse thunder by, a lion trailing along, and a rider bull with his chin on high still holds the rope. Hi, Jim Bob. No one else. Still fashioned to that killer cat. Lonnie, look, look, Lonnie boy. See? See up there? Again the moon? Shadows. It, it looks like a mountain lion. And a man on a horse. There he goes. There he goes. The man wouldn't give up. High chin Bob. Still chasing his killer cat. Deborah Padgett again. <laughs> Do you have a favorite time to pray? One friend of mine, a woman, thinks that the best time to pray is in the morning, particularly a morning bright with sunshine when the skies are blue and the birds are singing. Prayers in the morning, she says, are prayers of hope. Now another friend, a man, says that he prays best by the little reminders of the day the sounding of a church bell, the sight of a poor beggar on the street, or, or the shock of a narrow escape at a busy intersection, seeing the inspiration on the face of a nun, watching a policeman helping an old lady across the street, or the feeling of hunger appeased after a good meal. He says prayers like this are mostly prayers of thankfulness. And still another friend, a woman, insists that the best time to pray is when the dark comes and gently enfolds this garish, gaudy world of ours. Prayers at night are inclined to be prayers of love, both of God and neighbor. Well, what I am doing is proving that it, it doesn't matter much when you pray, as long as you do pray. But pray especially as a family, for there's great joy in praying with others. Who of us still hasn't heard that the family that prays together stays together? More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Legend of High Chin Bob, starring Walter Brennan. Deborah Paget was your hostess. Others in our cast were Vivi Janis, John Daner, Billy Bauckham, and Billy Chapin. The script was written by John McGreevy, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Chicky, starring Anne Blythe, Marjorie Steele, and Marvin Miller. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.